me in welcoming Michelle Mallon from the School of Business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the warm welcome. And, and thank you, Leo, for having me back again. Uh, so as Leo mentioned, my name is uh, Michelle Malin. I'm a chartered accountant, and uh, now we're all called chartered professional accountants, CPAs. And I'm also assistant professor here at McEwen University. I teach primarily intermediate financial accounting. So uh, if you do choose accounting, I probably won't see you until next year or the year after. And I also teach income tax. So I'm very happy to be here today to talk to you about a uh, career in accounting. Uh, hopefully it'll help you make a decision on whether accounting's for you or not. Um, because it's a career I'm very proud of, and it's a career that uh, allows me to do what I do, love to do every single day. So what I'm going to talk about is, uh, first of all, how I got into accounting, and uh, was accounting something that I had a burning passion to become an accountant as a child? Did I dress up in power suits and play with calculators? No, of course not. Uh, I was like a normal kid. I, I dreamed of becoming everything from a, a rock star to a forensic psychologist to a veterinarian. Um, so how did I choose accounting, and then how did I end up in a career that I, I love? So that's a bit of what I'm gonna talk to you about today. And I'm gonna start off with actually some career advice uh, that I found on YouTube. It's a little bit unorthodox, um, but I think it really follows uh, or aligns with the decisions I made uh, in my career and my career path. So we'll start with that, then I'll talk a bit about what is a CPA, how you become a CPA, what are the career opportunities for accountants, and then I'll talk about my specific path, the decisions I made, and hopefully give you guys some insight into career in accounting and help you uh, make your own career decisions. So start off with my unorthodox career advice. So this video I'm gonna play for you, just a quick two minute video that I found on YouTube. It's an excerpt from an interview with a gentleman named Mike Rowe, and he used to be the, um, I guess the host for a reality television show called Dirty Jobs. Has anyone heard of it? Yes, a few people are nodding. So I think they still play reruns on the Discovery Channel. If you haven't heard of it, in the show, Mike Rowe kind of shadows hardworking Americans on their unusual jobs and careers. And through his experience as being the host of that television show, he's come to develop a, a bit of an unorthodox career advice that he, uh, he shares with people. He's spoken at graduations and all sorts of things. So the video I'm gonna play for you will explain his, uh, his viewpoint on how people should choose a career. I've met on my journeys, by and large, didn't set out to realize their dream. They looked around for an opportunity. They identified the opportunity, they exploited the opportunity, they worked at the opportunity, and then they got good at the opportunity. Then they figured out how to love it. So, do you have to have passion? Absolutely. Do you have to rely upon it to drive you? No. I don't think so. I think that there's a great case to be made for the cold, hard, unglamorous calculus of practicality. When you follow your passion, when you follow your dream, when you grow up being told that you're a precious little snowflake and all you have to do is look inward and identify that thing in you that you want more than anything else, that's a trap. Because once you see that thing, once you can articulate what that thing is, you're going to make a list of things that you have to do. So, okay, I know I want to be an astronaut. I know that's the thing that's going to make me happy. What do I have to do to get there? And you make this list and you go down that road and you start to cross those things off and maybe you make it, maybe you don't. Statistically, you're not gonna make it. You know why? Because there are only like 100 astronauts. Tough, okay, it's a tough thing to do. I think when you put passion first, you erect a giant wall. And if you can get over it, and get down to the other side, then you get to write the biography and tell the world about how you identified your wish. And people love to read that crap. In my view, <laughs> that's simply not how most success works. So many guys on dirty jobs, and women, who I talk to would look around and at the start of their career and simply see where everybody else was going and just go the other way. 
That's how the septic tank businesses with 30, 40 employees start. Nobody, nobody wants to do it. So every now and then a guy comes along and jumps in. Les Swanson, guy from Wisconsin. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's a great story, Les tells. He knew out of college that he wanted to work with kids and he wanted to be in some kind of uh, psychological realm. Did everything he needed to do, got the job he wanted. 20 years later, he just simply wasn't passionate about it. So he looked around. There was a need in Madison for a septic tank cleaner. There just weren't enough of them. He started, and he hired some people, and he hired a few more. Now he has a few trucks, and he sips margaritas by his pool. Yes, he's covered in other people's crap during the day, but it washes off, and he's happy. Long way of saying, never follow your passion, but always bring it with you. Mike's advice there for everyone is to not follow your passion, but bring it with you. And what I'm going to talk to you a bit about today is uh, going to align with that advice. Um, so Mike says, find an opportunity, and then bring your passion with you. Once you've acquired those skills in your chosen field, you've found that opportunity, then you can apply those skills, find your passion, and, uh, and find a place that uh, not only you're successful in, but also you're happy. Um, and I'm, I made a similar decisions when I chose to go into accounting. Uh, I made practical choices. I chose accounting because I thought it was a field with lots of income earning potential, and job security. And then once I got into the field, I found some areas that interested me. I acquired some skills and ended up in a job that I'm really passionate about and a job that I love. So I'm going to talk to you today about that decision that I made that follows and is in line with Mike's advice. Before I do that, though, before I get to my career choices, I just want to quickly talk about uh, accounting and the professional designation in Canada. Um, so how many people here have already decided that they do want to major in accounting? in their degrees. So a few people, okay, great. So for those of you who already decided this might be old information, you already know this. For those who don't know anything about accounting or are undecided, hopefully this gives you some insight. So in Canada, we have a professional designation for accounting called the Chartered Professional Accountant, CPA. And it's a fairly new designation. It's made up of three legacy designations that used to exist in Canada. Chartered Accountant, which is what I was, uh, CMA, Certified Managerial Accountant, and CGA, Certified General Accountant. So these three professions merged into one. And now we have a very large professional body in Canada of 19,000 members. And as a profession, like all professions, we're self-regulating. So the professional body, the CPA Canada, provides us with our code of conduct. We self-discipline, self-regulate. So that's just a, a little bit about accounting in Canada. How do you become a CPA? There are several routes, but all of them involve um, some courses and some work after graduation. So after you graduate with your degree, with your accounting courses and prerequisites, um, you start at work, and while you're working, you take courses. And this process in accounting is called articling. And it usually takes about two years. And the most common articling path is while you're working, you take a series of courses, six courses, which we call modules, and they're mostly online. Uh, they have a few bits of classroom components and some exam components to them, but most of the courses are done online, so it's uh, done in your own time outside of work. And the, the courses are called the Professional Education Program, and those are the six modules. So there's two core modules, and then there's two elective modules or elective courses, so you can kind of specialize in a certain area of accounting if you're interested. And then there's two capstones. One's a group project, a board report, and one's an exam preparation course that prepares you for the final professional exam, and once you pass that, you are a CPA. So that whole process takes about two years of articling. Um, I went over that very quickly at a very high level, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those after. Um, there's also a website there uh, that you can access more information about that. So, for those of you who've already decided accounting, um, and you, if you don't want to share, you don't have to, but is anyone willing to share why they chose accounting? What drew them to that? No? No shares? Um, anyone 
Can you have a guess why most people choose accounting as a major? I think I heard someone say it quietly, money. So salary, salary is probably the number one thing, if we're all being honest with ourselves, number one reason why people choose accounting. Uh, they've heard things about the salary of accountants. So I thought we might as well talk about that since that's what most students think about when they think of accounting. So I brought some facts about salaries and compensation levels for accountants in Canada and Alberta. So this is from a 2015 compensation study for CPAs and it was based on 2014 information. So Alberta is uh, the place to be as a CPA. We have the highest average compensation of 184,000. But across Canada, we're not bad. In 2014, average salary for CPA is 151,000, which is up from the previous compensation report. And by city, the cities with the highest average compensation for accountants are Edmonton and Calgary, number one and two, or sorry, Calgary, Edmonton, number one and two. So very good places to be. And uh, CPAs are not restricted to just working in Canada. There's lots of international opportunities for CPAs. And as you can see from the slide, CPAs working in, uh, in other jurisdictions uh, have an even higher average compensation. And because we're in Alberta, I put in the average compensation for CPAs in the oil and gas industry as well, since that's a, that's a major employer in our province. So one biggest reason why students choose accounting is compensation. So there's the facts for that. The second reason why a lot of people choose accounting for a career, which may not be familiar to a lot of people, a lot of non-accountants may not realize this, but there's a lot of variety in job opportunities for accountants. Uh, most people who are non-accountants, when they imagine an accountant, they think of uh, someone toiling away, doing someone else's tax returns in an office by themselves. But that's just one career opportunity in accounting. That's working in public practice. Um, but there are many others. And the next slide will show you some of just a few of the opportunities available to accountants. So a lot of executive positions, CEOs, presidents, CFOs are held by accountants in Canada. And I threw some average salary up there for CEO CPAs. And again, that would be in any company in any industry. Uh, in addition, a lot of companies require treasurers or middle managers. Um, and again, Every company, every industry requires at least one accountant, if not a team of accountants, to work in their finance and accounting department. So whatever industry you're interested in, you can start working in that and pursue an accounting career there. There is public practice still, which I mentioned. So that's what most people think of as accountants. So those are the firms like Deloitte, KPMG, PwC. They're the firms where accountants work. And even within those firms, there's a wide variety of opportunities. You don't have to just work preparing someone else's tax returns. You can work in audit. Uh, you can provide business consulting services, assurance services. So there's a wide variety of opportunities within the firm. And if you work your way up to the top of the firm, become a partner, the average compensation is there as well. Um, board of directors for both profit and non-profit organizations always look for accountants to sit on the board to provide some financial advice. So lots of opportunities there. And I'll talk a bit, a little bit later about the, the board that I sit on. And lastly, a lot of students are interested in this, is becoming an entrepreneur. Um, one tenth or 10% of CPAs in Canada run their own business. And it makes sense that they have the average salary up there, it's 316,000. It makes sense they do well because a lot of people have great ideas for businesses and I saw this all the time when I was in public practice. Entrepreneurs would start a business, something they're really passionate about, but they lack the basic financial skills to make their business successful. And the common statistic in Canada is that two uh, or eight out of 10 new businesses fail within the first 18 months. Only two survive, and the reason for that is the um, poor money management and the lack of, uh, the inability to define a profitable business model. And typically accountants, once you've gotten your CPA, you have the skills required to understand financial statements, understand debt management and leverage. So the accountants running their own business are likely gonna be that two out of 10 successful businesses. So we have the entrepreneurs up there as well. Lots of job opportunities for accountants. So that's one of the reasons I chose accounting. I chose it for the job opportunities. I chose it for the salary. Um, I thought it was a field that had lots of job security, which I liked. So I made practical choices to go into accounting. 
I didn't follow my passion there. I was not passionate about accounting. Um, but I thought this would be a good way to start my career. And uh, I worked hard through school, finished my classes, and when I graduated, I started working at Deloitte, which is a large public practice firm in Edmonton here. And articling in a public practice accounting firm is a lot of hard work, involves some longer hours, but the work hard, play hard atmosphere of the public practice accounting firms and your ability to bond with your fellow articling students really does make the process uh, bearable and even enjoyable. So I did my two years of articling at Deloitte, worked hard, and wrote my final professional exam, passed it, and I can easily say the day I found out I passed the UFE was the best day of my life, hands down, because it was such a long, hard process to get there. Like anything in life, the harder the process, the more you work at it, the more satisfying it is when you achieve or finish the process or achieve your goal. And it's the same thing with getting your CPA. Um, most CPAs would say the same thing about the day they find out they passed, is that it is so gratifying and they're so proud of their designation because it involves some hard work. And a lot of people say nothing's worth doing if it's uh, too easy. So accounting is no different. But here I was, it was 2007. I had just written the UFI, I'd passed it, I've achieved this goal I've been working towards for so long. I didn't really like what I was doing though. I was an auditor at Deloitte, and some people like auditing, it could be for them, but for me, it, it wasn't for me. And I'll tell you a little bit of why. Um, when you're an auditor in a public practice accounting firm, you know, you're a 20-something, fresh-faced young auditor, and you're going out to your clients' uh, offices, and uh, you're walking into the office of the payroll clerk who's 20 to 30 years older than you, who's been doing that job for longer than you've maybe been alive, and uh, you're pestering them. You're asking them questions, you're asking for working papers. And so even though the client has hired you to audit them and prepare their financial statements, there can be this slight feeling of animosity between you and the client, and it can be a bit awkward. So that was the main reason why I didn't like auditing, is I found the client accounting relationship was uh, a bit awkward for me. But fortunately, while I was articling, I had the opportunity to work in tax. So one season at Deloitte, I worked in the tax pool, which meant that I prepared personal and corporate tax returns for clients of the firm. And I loved it. Um, I really liked the client accountant relationship, that different relationship. The clients, when you're doing tax, really value the services you're providing them. They, uh, they see that you're helping them prepare a tax return that they're legally required to file. Not only that, through your understanding of the income tax legislation, you're helping them save money on their tax return. So the client is happy to help you, happy to answer your questions because they value the services you're providing. So that really appealed to me with tax. The other thing I liked about tax is that every day is different. Tax is a lot of problem solving. And so you have to take these parameters, the tax rules, the tax legislation that's very strict, and you have to apply it to your client's scenario. And every client's different. They have different facts in their life and different situation and different incomes. And so it's a bit of problem solving, fitting those rules to your client. And I found that exciting, and I enjoyed that. So I decided to pursue a career in tax. Now I'll just mention that this was a really difficult decision for me. Uh, because at the time, I thought in my head, if I choose to become a tax specialist, if I go down this path, I work as a tax specialist, and I took a course called In-Depth Taxation to become a tax specialist, I'm closing off doors in my, in my career. I'm closing off opportunities because surely not every company needs a tax specialist. So automatically I'm losing some potential jobs. But I wanted to mention that it was a really difficult decision to make at the time to specialize, but it was the best decision in my career. Specialization did not close off opportunities, it did the opposite, it brought several opportunities to me, one that brought me here to McEwen. So I wanted to tell students that never worry about specialization, don't worry about becoming an expert in your field, that's only gonna open up doors to you, it doesn't close down doors. Um, so that's my one lesson that I learned through my career. So specializing in tax ended up being the best decision I made. Um, 
it brought to me a lot of different opportunities that I'll just quickly mention. First of all, while I was working in public practice, a friend of mine who's teaching at Nate said they were looking for someone to teach an intro tax course. And they wanted someone who knew their stuff and who was passionate about tax. So she called me and uh, she said, I know, you're, you, know, you know your stuff and you like tax, so I think you'd be great for this course. So I thought, well, I never thought of teaching before. It wasn't a plan of mine, but I um, thought, well, it'll be easy. It's an intro tax course and I make a little extra money on the side. And I still remember it. I was working at my MNP and on Wednesday nights from six to 10, I'd go teach at Nate this intro tax course. And I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. I loved it for the same reasons I like tax. You're helping people, you're helping students make decisions about their career, teaching them new concepts. I love the problem solving aspect, breaking down complex concepts into kind of bite-sized pieces that students can understand. Um, and I love the interactions with the students. Students thirst for knowledge, when they have that aha moment, when they understand a concept. Teaching is incredibly rewarding. And uh, fortunately, around that time when I was teaching at Nate, McEwen was hiring a full-time accounting instructor. So I applied and here I am five years later at McEwen. And I, I honestly do love what I do. I know you hear a lot of people say that and they don't necessarily mean it, but I do. I love coming to work every day. I love everything about the job. And it's something I never considered doing. But by following my career in accounting and specializing and kind of seeing where things go, bringing my passion with me, I ended up here in a job I love. The other opportunity I want to highlight for you is came to me through tax is being involved in a non-for-profit board. So I, um, when I was at MMP, a colleague of mine asked me if I'd be interested in serving on a, a non-profit board, and she was involved with Edmonton Women's Shelter, which you may know as Winhouse. It's the oldest and largest sheltering organization in Canada. They operate three emergency shelters for women and children fleeing domestic violence. And I got involved with them um, through this colleague at tax, and again, it's incredibly rewarding and I love it. It's, a, it's an opportunity that is available to anyone in any field, but nonprofits particularly look for accountants to join their boards because they need that financial advice to fulfill their fiduciary duty to their stakeholders. So I've been the treasurer on Windhouse's board for seven years now, and it's incredible. You get to use your accounting skills, which might seem very mundane and not capable of doing many amazing things, except prepare financial statements or tax returns, but I get to use those skills to, to help an organization that really does do amazing things. It literally saves people's lives. I mean, how often can you say accounting saves lives? But it does when you're involved with these other organizations, and you get to give back to your community in another way while still using your accounting expertise. So Another opportunity available through my specialization was getting involved on in that board, and it's been a fantastic experience. I would strongly recommend it to all of you. No matter what field you go into, <clears throat> get involved when you graduate, get involved on a board. There's boards for every kind of organization, so you can pick one that you're particularly interested in. But it's, again, a rewarding experience, great for your resume. There's all, only upsides. So <clears throat> I started my career by making practical choices. I did not follow a passion. But I ended up in a job I never thought I'd be in and absolutely loving what I do every day. So in closing, I don't want anyone to think that I told you to not have a dream or not be passionate about your careers. Instead, I'm echoing what Mike said earlier. So don't necessarily follow a passion, follow opportunity, but bring your passion with you. And once you achieve that initial level of success, once you find an area you're interested in, specialize, work hard, gain the expertise, and the skills necessary to apply to your passion and be a success at it. Um, the other thing is, um, when you guys graduate, no matter what field you go into, whether it's accounting or, or something else, understand that you're likely not gonna start in a position that you're really passionate about. You're gonna start at the bottom of your industry, your chosen field, probably doing a job that's a bit mundane. But respect the process. Learn as much as you can. Don't be afraid to specialize, become an expert and then see where those opportunities take you and bring your passion along for the ride. And like me, you might end up doing something you never thought and loving it. So that was what I wanted to talk to you about today. I'm happy to answer any questions about accounting or anything else I spoke about today. Um, and thank you for all of your attention. All right, Michelle. Uh, we got one question right now and sure. feel free to uh, type in some more questions. This is from Lucas. I think this is to try and understand the difference between a CPA and an MBA. 
in terms of just oh. commitment. So the question is, uh, my roommate is working towards his de designation, a CPA. And he has said that the MBA designation is carrying less weight nowadays. He believes that due to the increased availability of MBA programs, uh, it is becoming more common amongst those applying for jobs. So is the CPA actually the new MBA? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, the CPA is the program, the art of clean process and doing the courses after graduation is set up to be a graduate level program. So very similar to a master's or an MBA. Um, the only thing is, uh, or the differences I guess would be, accounting, CPA is, is obviously very accounting, finance, tax focused, whereas an MBA is kind of like a, a miniature graduate level bachelor of commerce. When you go do an MBA in most schools, if you're doing a course-based MBA, you're gonna end up doing you know, a little accounting course, a little marketing course, very similar to what you guys do in bachelor of commerce. So I have heard from some people uh, that if you, take, if you took a bachelor of commerce in your undergrad, doing an MBA is not maybe as effective because you're not building very many new skills. MBAs are mostly targeted for uh, business professionals who maybe didn't have that uh, Bachelor of Commerce undergrad. Um, so in that way, a CPA would be building on your skills because it's definitely building your accounting, finance, tax, assurance knowledge to another level. Um, so you wouldn't be, I guess, redoing information or, or concepts you've already learned. Um, and then, as I mentioned, once you have the CPA like an MBA, it does open a lot of doors. You're not restricted to just working in an accounting. Um, a lot of executive positions look for people with an accounting finance background and a designation. And getting that designation doesn't just say you're an accounting robot. You gain a lot of other professional soft skills along the way. Um, because the two years of articling is not easy, you build time management skills, stress management skills, teamwork, leadership skills, communication skills, are uh, really heavily uh, focused on in the CPA program, both oral and written. So there's a lot of skills you acquire aside from just the technical accounting skills. Yep. Uh, let me add to that in terms of the, not really related to the accounting side, but the MBA might be an option for a BCom grad. Um, I wouldn't recommend it right after you finish a yeah. BCom because it'd be like you're repeating Repetitive. some assignments, you know, yeah. you'll see similar content. Maybe further down into your uh, career when you're looking to maybe network with certain other okay. fellow classmates that have also some work experience. Or if you're pursuing something more specialized, mm -hmm. so there are now, because the MB programs are proliferating, uh, there are programs that have specializations that you point. might be very interested in. So sustainability related specializations, mm -hmm. you could pursue that in an MBA. I would suspect accounting, I don't know if there are a lot of specialized accounting yeah. programs in Yeah, MBA. there are. Uh, I have a master's in professional accounting, which is from the University of Saskatchewan. There's also out east, they have a, a couple master's graduate level programs in accounting as well. Yeah. Let's just stick with the CPA uh, questioning here from Sienna. Does the CPA designation transfer into the US? Very good question. So in Canada, the CPA uh, profession has agreements with various other countries to honor the professional designations of, of other jurisdictions. So in uh, Canada, we have agreements with the United States, various countries through Europe, uh, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, um, so Australia, so a lot of those places allow CPAs to go and work in accounting in those countries. If you wanted to stay in those countries permanently, you would probably need to do um, an equivalency exam, which just means you basically write an exam um, and uh, you don't have to go through the articling process again, you just write the exam, challenge the exam essentially, and then get the designation of that country. But you can definitely work on a temporary basis in a lot of different countries with the CPA. It's only if you're planning on staying permanently you'd need to get the designation of that country. All right, All right. thank you very thank much, you, everyone. Michelle.